Discover the exquisite beauty of Islam with our exclusive poster collection showcasing the 99 names of Allah. Each poster meticulously presents the Arabic name, pronunciation and English translation, embodying the essence of our Creator. Elevate your surroundings with these high-quality designs that not only serve as art, but also offer a glimpse into the profound beauty of Islamic culture. Immerse yourself in the collection and unveil the magnificence of the 99 names. Links in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, GTA 6 is coming out. This game has been long awaited for multiple generations. Over 10 years people are waiting for this game to finally come out. That just shows you which power the gaming industry truly holds nowadays. I would make the argument that the gaming industry nowadays is way bigger than Hollywood ever was and ever will be. The gaming industry is is bigger than a Netflix or any other streaming platforms. And this is why I believe it is the perfect timing to return to the Army of Satan series and react to the dark side of the gaming industry. Guys, before we jump into the video, as always, if you enjoy my work, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below. We have brand new merch for you. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. The effects of video gaming big plagues on, on our civilization. I'm talking about global civilization. This is a multi-billion dollar industry with massive yes. resources and power now. This is incredibly harmful. It's addict, addict, people die from this. There was a Japanese boy who gamed until he had a heart attack. So yes, Hamza Yusuf is absolutely correct here. There was indeed one Japanese boy that died in his coffin apartment gaming World of Warcraft for three days straight. I'm not too sure that he had a heart attack. I believe that he died of malnutrition and of dehydration. This boy simply forgot to eat, being so immersed in his video game. I do not want to condone video games, however, we do have to make the distinction here. Of course, most people do not die by playing video games. This was surely an underlying issue and this boy got addicted to video games. If it wasn't for video games, this boy probably would have gotten addicted to something else. I do not want to downplay video games yet again, however, we do have to admit and stay unbiased here that the majority of people won't die playing video games. People die from this. It's true there are only a small number of people that yeah. are going to get addicted in that way. It's not people die Islam from this. A That's a big, big people. statement, man. So Again, I have to interrupt here because saying simply people die from this, this is a blanket statement that you cannot really apply to video games. If you say people die from drinking alcohol, you would be right. If you say people die from smoking cigarettes, you would be right. But making this blanket statement and saying people die from playing video games is of course an over-exaggeration. This cannot hold true just because one person died whilst playing video games. It prohibits things that are harmful. Anybody who studied fiqh knows there's a section on bi'ah. It's prohibited to sell ala to lahu. It's haram to sell games. You can make this. your own games, you know, like play games, children play games, rocks and stones. Little kids, they don't care what you give them. But to sell things and make money off lahu, is prohibited in our Sharia. All right, obviously I'm not a scholar, so this is something that I hear for the very first time, but I'm wondering because within Hadith, we do find the mentioning of puppets, of little dolls, right, that girls played with. So therefore, somebody must have sold those dolls, I assume. Please let me know in the comment section what you know about this. Is it really true that you cannot sell anything that is for amusement? Nobody talks about this anymore. They just think, oh, you can just go and, and do this and it doesn't matter. You know, this, this is what's happened to us because shaitan has taken us by steps. So if you look at these things, social isolation, drop in school performance, obesity, people that game are fatter than people that don't, wasting time, which is a great sin in our religion, to waste our time, it's sinful. 
to waste time. I absolutely agree with the wasting time argument here because ultimately, yes, it is a waste of time. You're learning skills within a game. Those skills are not applicable to the real world. If you want to sit in front of your computer, you might as well acquire skills that are useful to you, such as editing videos, investing, etc. Kids really put so much time into video games, skilling up their characters, make those characters look buff, go to the gym and whatnot. I remember GTA San Andreas. I used to do the same. This was way before I had access to the gym. So I would go with my character and level him up, lift weights with CJ and build a muscular physique. However, once I had access to the gym, I left video games behind and I was working on myself, of course, skilling my character up, if you will. It is an absolute waste of time. But nevertheless, to stay critical of this video as well, when he speaks about obesity, sure, 100%, there is a correlation between gaming and obesity. But the elephant in the room is, of course, junk food. And I make the argument yet again, if there were no video games whatsoever, those kids with access to junk food would still be fed. They would be eating junk food, watch TV, read comics and whatnot. They would always find a way to engage in gluttony. So therefore, it is a much deeper issue than just saying, hey, video games make you fat. Violent tendencies. We know this. Financial loss. Decrease in empathy. You become less empathic. Average age of these players, 35 years old. What are you doing? Yep, I agree. Seriously, 35 years old is the average. There was a game called Tetris. And I had never done this before. So I start playing You've it. You never played Tetris and it, in your yeah, life? Yeah, it was really interesting. And I was, oh, okay. And I, and I worked it out. And, and I, I, I don't even know how long I played it for. When you I got finished, sucked into Tetris. I turned away and I was seeing those images come down. I, n I never did it again. And my wife would testify, I, have, I don't play any of those games. I've never okay, played any of those games. I am against those games. Against They're Tetris. evil games. And I really encourage you just to give them up. And I just have to laugh because I imagine Hamza Yusuf just playing Tetris for six hours, not seeing time fly by. And after that, he sees those blocks rushing down everywhere. Again, I absolutely agree that video games are a waste of time. However, to classify Tetris as evil is a bit of a stretch for me. Utilize your time. Learn a language. Go sure. talk to the Orang Asli about Islam. You know, go, go, go clean up. Get like uh, volunteer groups that do uh, uh, litter pickup on your streets. You know, go, seriously, go do something useful. Go play soccer. Go visit your grandmother. Go to a, a, a hospital and visit people that aren't getting people yeah, visiting. Yeah, that's a waste of time argument useful, yet again. That's but absolutely don't correct. Waste your time, I agree. Uh, doing this, forty-nine percent are eighteen to forty-nine year olds. Twenty-five yep. percent less than eighteen year old. Twenty-six percent are over fifty years old. So this is Ammat al Balwa. Look at the physical fight. Gamers, forty percent of females have been in a physical fight in America. Fifty-one percent of males. Look at the non-gamers. 14% okay, as opposed to 28%. Not a good number. You know, and they'll say, oh, but you can't prove any correlation. Right? There's, you can't prove it. Uh, you don't need... Uh, yeah, you really can't prove it. it. Yeah, that's really weak numbers because ultimately you're saying that those people that got into fights played video games as well. There is, of course, a multitude of reasons why people get into fights and therefore to single out and say, hey, it's the video games would, of course, be an exaggeration. Especially by showing those numbers because you displayed that the majority of people anyways play video games already and therefore you cannot single out and say it is because of the video games that those people get into fights. People have been getting into fights prior to video games and therefore you cannot blame it on it. I'm aware I sound to, to like I'm defending I'm video games, poor grade, but it's just a poor females, argument. Females, almost 40%, 35% of the males, as opposed to 20% and 23%. No relationship though, no correlation, can't prove it. Damaged property, 15% of the gamers, 23%. This is people going out and damaging property. In other words, uh, delinquency. Yeah, yet again, correlation is not causation, man. I used to play video games myself and I did not go out and damage property. However, yet again, correlation is not causation. If you look into those people that damage property, what else do they do? Probably you find them as well drinking alcohol, smoking cigarettes. Maybe they come from broken homes. Probably they're eating a poor diet as well. So there you see you have so many factors 
And now to single out gaming is just disingenuous. 5% of females, 10% of males, which is still high, I think. 89% oh, really? of top selling video games contain violent content. Oh, sure. Half of it is of a serious nature. Highly criticized video game Grand Theft Auto, which was actually developed by uh, some criminals. They were real criminals, drug dealers. That's not true. He came up with this idea. You get points by killing police. That's not true at all. Again, I appreciate what he wants to do for the Uma, that he wants to warn them of video games, but you can do it in an honest fashion as well. The inventors of Grand Theft Auto are not drug dealers. It is absolutely enough if you say, hey, those games promote violence, they promote drugs, they promote stealing cars, etc., etc. That would be sufficient. You don't have to make up claims that are not true. He takes you by steps. This is 2008. It was 11, almost $12 billion. It's a lot of power. When you have that kind of money, you can buy judges, you can, you can lobby people, you can do immense things. Unfortunately, the most popular video games, even among very young kids, are the ones that reward you for doing violence against others. And when you think of the fact that people sat in front of a flight simulator and learned to fly planes well enough to bring the World Trade Towers to the ground, Mm, that's what and we're putting our kids for fun in front of essentially killing simulators. Where are we going with that? We have to really recognize the fact that there are changes in their minds, in their thinking, and their behavior that are going to come of that. Um, if there weren't changes from media from entertainment we wouldn't do it again by now i'm aware i sound like a pro gaming advocate here i'm shilling for the gaming industry but the point of the story is my whole generation grew up playing counter-strike and out of all of those people maybe one or two percent actually went to the army and zero percent ever became violent shooters so even when i was growing up they were making those claims on television ah those video games make you aggressive you're gonna do a school shooting etc etc i don't know what one person from my upbringing and they all played those shooting games who actually went and did a shooting went out and made people with guns and therefore i would have to reduce it to the human mind ultimately the obsession with violence so if i look into the generation of my father they were watching violent action movies and those action movies were pretty brutal as well before that, God knows what they were doing. Maybe they were reading violent books and what not, or going to war themselves, because my granddad actually went to war. Those last two generations didn't really go to war, and therefore they're simulating fighting and war games on their laptops. I really boil it down to psychology and to a healthy human mind. If you have a healthy human mind, no video game, no action movie, no book can make you violent. I believe that violence springs forth from a traumatized upbringing. Something went wrong in your childhood. This is why you become violent. And this is what I've seen in my everyday life as well. The kids, they were actually violent. They all had broken homes. Something was wrong with the father figure at home, etc., etc. You name it. And then, whoopsie, they were playing video games. Yes, I was playing video games as well, and I was not violent whatsoever. So we need to go into these processes with our eyes open, understanding that um, we are changing our children, we are changing ourselves, and we should make sure that the changes that are happening are ones that we want. Video games do, in fact, and are designed to affect the empathy level the moral compass of children, especially, and, and adults. And it made me quit because I am supporting, I am creating the content to destroy children's empathy and adults. I'm creating the content and the sounds to make demons come to life. Why am I doing this? This is not who I am. I, I don't know if people can really relate to that or grasp that. Yeah, I personally can't really relate to that, as I said multiple times now, because for me, when you're fighting demons, for example, in a video game, it's pretty abstract, right? You're the good guy and you're fighting monsters. Fine. When I look at Hollywood, on the other hand, and movies such as American Pie, they're promoting fornication and they're putting out this movie to a whole generation. So what happened within my generation, I saw that people went to the cinema, they watched American Pie when they were very young, roughly 12 years old or so and this is when fornication started everybody was just emulating what they saw in those movies because it was much more relatable of course but going out and fighting demons on a video game everybody can make that distinction in my opinion but that is my story that is how i quit because i could not be a part of what i was 
was a part, was creating to further destroy whatever moral compass is left in people. I, I tell you this, my opinion, nobody should allow their children to play any video games. Well, nobody should allow their children to have a phone or watch TV. If you look at who's supporting the games, who's, who's you know, there's military games on. specifically created by the military, which are sure. often war games. There's sometimes it's sponsored by CIA. Sometimes it's, you know, just to bet you, sh you should look at who's actually giving to, uh, money for these Our games. Game. And so you ask, you know, where's that coming from? Somewhere in that mix, there is some agent in between these companies and government telling them what to do. Now, I can't. Yeah, I agree with all of this, but then we really have to ask ourselves if those games are promoted by the military, what has happened since they're promoting those games? Do we see a rise in military numbers, people that are being recruited by the military, by the army? I do not think so whatsoever. And as I said, maybe one or two percent of people that played those video games that I know personally actually went to the army and they did not go to the army because of those video games. So therefore, if this is some sort of CIA recruitment scheme, I would say it's failing miserably. You point to a specific agency or whatever, but it's kind of obvious when you understand that aspect of it, that everything happens because government says it does. I just, I just to give you an example, why would you want to play something like Call of Duty? Why would you want to pick up a gun because you're actually and shoot too weak to do it in real life in in a pretend fashion? Why would you want to? Do, what is it that drives us to find that amusing or fun? Yeah, what drives that to be fun for the human being is the biology of the human being in the first place. The human being has a violent nature and this is why we see wars everywhere. The human being actually has this fight in him. Most people do not go after it. Most people do not pursue any martial arts, let alone go into the army, let alone go into a real war fighting, killing people. However, because it is within them, they want to make that experience and therefore they do that experience virtually. For example, I personally don't really like to jump out of an airplane. Plan. I have no need for that whatsoever. Would I do it on a virtual simulation? Hmm, maybe. Either way, I find it pretty silly, to be honest. I don't really have a need for it. However, if I were to do it whatsoever, then I personally would do it virtually. Why risk my life and jump out of a real airplane? So this is why I assume, of course, that people that are not fit to go into war, they do not want to risk their lives, but they want to see a glimpse of it. They want to make that experience. It is the same thing with war footage from Gaza now. Nobody wants to see those atrocities but somehow nobody can look away. People are attracted to violence. It is in our nature. Study after study after study have shown that the rating systems consistently underestimate the potency of what they're being, what is being presented in that media. A second problem for me as a pediatrician, as a child health researcher, and as a parent is that they are not scientifically based, nor are they concerned about the outcomes of exposure to this. What they're concerned about is social acceptability of this material. So for example, um, in the movie rating systems, you'll get an R rating uh, for showing a naked person. But you will only get a PG or a PG-13 for disemboweling a person. And it sure. teaches that it is not only acceptable or normative to do things like that, but that that should be enjoyable because we're here, after all, for fun. Um, so, unfortunately, the rating systems have to be seen for what they are. They will tell you increasing severity of, of whatever it is they're rating. But it's increasing severity for social acceptability reasons, not for reasons of the child's health or well-being. All right, this is it for today's video. As I said previously, unfortunately, I cannot react to the whole video here on YouTube any longer. Therefore, if you want to see the Army of Satan series part 14, the dark side of the gaming industry, you can find it on the channel Rational Believer. That being said, I pretty much told you everything I think about during my reaction. The strongest argument against gaming is wasting time. And this is, of course, the greatest sin you can commit. Wasting time. This is such a precious life. Just think about it. If today was your last day, you would know it for a fact. Would you then play video games? 
Imagine yourself being on your deathbed. What kind of regrets do you have? Oh, I didn't finish GTA 6. <laughs> of course not. It is about the moments in this real life. Even atheists would agree with this statement. Everybody understands that this is such a blessing to be alive. Now you're here and now you're wasting your life to level up on a screen. You do not get anything out of it. At some point you finish the game and then you're waiting for the next game to come. I finished GTA 5 over 10 years years ago. I played it. That was the last game that I truly played. And the reason for that is I was sick. I had a severe autoimmune disorder. I couldn't leave my house. And the only thing I could do was play video games and recover, get well. And during that time, I admit GTA 5 was a great way to kill time because i was so unhappy in my sixth state my physical state was destroyed and therefore i want to get my mind off reality in that moment it helped in that moment you might say it was justified but once i got healthy i put the video games aside and guess what I left the country, I left Germany and I moved to Australia and I started traveling the world. This was 2014, so roughly 10 years ago. Since then I haven't looked back, since then I didn't buy a PlayStation and I sat down and I played video games. No, I was skilling up myself. Yes, I've been sitting in front of a laptop creating a YouTube channel. Yes, I've been sitting in front of a laptop creating an online business. So you can skill yourself up virtually if you will as well, but it has to have a benefit onto yourself. Why would I skill? up a character that I'm going to put on hold at some point. I'm leveling up this character, I'm becoming a millionaire, I'm buying houses, I'm buying cars. And then the game is finished and you're still out of shape, probably even worse than before. You're unmarried, you're broke, you didn't change anything. So just a waste of time. Therefore, this is the biggest argument for me. Of course, there are some people that will get influenced, etc., etc., you name it. But I say that this is a psychological issue that starts in childhood due to parents, environment, and whatnot. I wouldn't blame it on the video games. The video games are just a way to waste your time. But the same applies as well to movies, to series, and even to some books. People believe, oh, I'm reading a book. I'm all so smart. Many, many books are absolute rubbish, man. And you're wasting your time reading those as well. Anyways, all of it boils down to wasting time. Instead of leveling up a character, level up yourself. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. And now, as always, guys, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.